putting reactant uh, notes and practice. Uh, let me go ahead and get my pen going here. Might have to do this in two sections. I don't know. We'll just have to see how long this lasts. Um, so what is this whole limiting reactant thing that we have to talk about? Well, in nature, in a lab, in just about any situation, you are very rarely going to have exactly the right amount of every reactant participating in the reaction. So you're usually going to have one thing that gets all used up and something that gets left over. The limiting reactant is that guy that gets all used up. It limits how much product you can make. And the guys that are left over, that's your excess reactant. So the reactant that's not completely used up. So coming back to our starter slide with all of our sandwich stuff, um, for each of these situations, we're going to figure out, well, how many sandwiches can you make and what is left over? So if each sandwich consists of, and this is like, has to be, you can't argue this, there's no exceptions to this sandwich formula, uh, then in this first situation, all you have to do is look at each of the things, figure out how many sandwiches you can make in the situations, and then choose whichever one is the lowest. So for the six slices of bread, ten meat, and four cheese, well, if each sandwich is two slices of bread, three slices of meat, and one slice of cheese, we have six bread, well, that means three sandwiches. We have ten meat, that means three and a third sandwiches, basically. Four cheese slices means we have four sandwiches. So the guy that limits how many sandwiches we can make is the six bread, six slices of bread. And we'll have one slice of meat left over and one slice of cheese. Going on to the second one, if we have 10 slices of bread, we can make five sandwiches. Six slices of meat means we can make two. And eight slices of cheese means we can make eight. So the limiting um, part of this is going to be our meat because we can only make two sandwiches with our meat, which leaves us with, if we used two, made two sandwiches, we're going to use four slices of bread, which means six slices of bread are left over. And um, since we're only making two sandwiches, we're going to have six slices of cheese left over. Then in this last big one, 30 slices of bread means we could make 15 sandwiches. 40, or 40 slices of meat means we could make 13 and a third sandwiches. 12 cheese slices means we could make 12 sandwiches. So this time the limiting one is your cheese, and you're going to have leftover bread and meat. Specifically, it looks like we'll use 24 slices of bread, so we'll have 6 bread left over. We'll use 36 slices of meat, so we'll have 4 slices of meat left over. And that's really all that there is to it when you're dealing with a limiting reactant. So, when do you have to deal with finding a limiting reactant? Well, so far, all of the questions that we've been working out, I've only given you one amount of a reactant. In this situation, then you get to assume that any reactants you weren't given a specific amount of are in excess. So, like, you know, let's just say, um, do a pretty normal decomposition reaction. So we have this, not decomposition, neutralization reaction. Uh, and if I said, okay, you have five grams of sodium hydroxide, how much salt can you make? Well, I only gave you one amount of a reactant. So that means you get to assume that the hydrochloric acid is in excess. You have to find the limiting reactant if I gave you two amounts. So if I said, not only do you have five grams of sodium hydroxide, but you also have five grams of hydrochloric acid, which you wouldn't usually measure hydrochloric acid in masses. You would measure it in molarity, but just for argument's sake, just go with it. And then how much salt will you produce? Well, in this case, you got to figure out, well, which one of these two guys is going to limit how much salt I can make? So how do you do that? Well, take the amount of each reactant that you were given and convert it to an amount of product. It doesn't matter which product you choose. Um, just so long as you choose the same product each time. And then all you have to do is compare the amount of product. Whichever reactant produces the least is your limiting reactant. So if we go back to the sodium hydroxide hydrochloric acid example. And I said you had five grams of each. So all you have to do is take these two amounts. You're going to have to set up two separate stoichiometries. It's going to start to get really repetitive, but it you know makes it easier in the long run. So you set up your 5 grams of NaOH. 
and convert it since, you know, it doesn't matter which product you choose, you know, I'll go ahead and stick with salt. Um, and then do the same thing with the HCL, five grams of HCL. And we're gonna convert both of these to sodium chloride. And the first thing you're gonna need is the molar masses of each of these compounds, because you gotta convert from grams to moles. And the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is about 40. per mole. And this reaction, we have a one to one mole ratio. So for each mole of NaOH, we're gonna get one mole of salt. I hate it when I make my lines too long. And then you would plug that in, five divided by 40 gives you one eighth or 0 0.125 moles of NaCl. Now we can stop at moles on this one because we're just comparing amounts. And so if you compare moles to moles, it works. If you did go the extra step and include, you know, go ahead and convert moles of NaCl to grams of NaCl, that's fine. It's just an extra step that, you know, you honestly don't really need. Now the molar mass of HCl is 36.45 grams to each mole. And then again, we still have the one to one mole ratio. I just put an N A right there. That should be an H. And so you work this one out. 5 divided by 36.45. And you get 0 0.137. So you just have to look at these. Compare these two numbers. Which one's lower? Well, this one's lower. So that means our 5 grams of NaOH is going to be our limiting reactant. Which means we're going to have leftover... Um, hydrochloric acid, so this will be our excess reactant. Now once you've identified your limiting reactant and your excess reactant, any calculations you've done with your excess reactant no longer matter because you're not going to be able to produce this much salt because you don't have enough sodium hydroxide to do that. So once you know your excess reactant, its calculation no longer matters. From here on out you do all of your calculations with your limiting reactant. So, another example. Reaction begins with 2.51 grams of HF and 4.56 grams of SiO2. Uh, what are the limiting and excess reactants? Well, the first thing we need above anything else is a reaction. So, HF plus SiO2. Looking at these um, reactants, you can see we have a compound plus a compound. So, this is going to be a double replacement reaction and the hydrogen and the silicon will switch places to form water and silicon tetrafluoride. It's SIF4 because silicon would be a plus four charge and fluorine would be a negative one, so you just crisscross. Uh, balancing this guy out, four, one, two, one. And remember, I'm going fast through this, so feel free to pause this whenever you need to. Now, the next thing is, it says, what are the limiting and excess reactants? So to figure out your limiting reactant, you take the amount that you were given of each reactant and convert it to a product. I'll go ahead and convert both of these uh, to water. So 2.51 grams of HF, converting that to silicon, or I'm sorry, converting that to water. Uh, hydrogen fluoride has a molar mass of 20.09 grams to every mole. And then our mole ratio is going to be four moles of HF to two moles of water. And you plug this in, 2.51 times two, divided by 20.9 and four. You get 0 0.0625 moles of water. Okay, then we've got our silicon dioxide, 4.56 grams of that. Convert that to moles of water. Uh, molar mass of silicon dioxide is 60 point something. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, dig out my periodic table here. Let's see, 28.09 plus 32 is 60.09. 
grams SiO2 to every mole. SiO2. Then our molar ratio, one mole of SiO2 to every two moles of water. Plug that into your trusty little calculator. 4.56 times 2 divided by 60.09 gives you 0 0.152 moles. And then all you have to do is compare these two numbers. Which one's lower? Well, this one's lower, so that means HF is our limiting reactant, which means silicon dioxide is our excess reactant. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here, and we'll do part two picking up right where we left off.